Hello, so uh, I'm Allison. I'm Jared. And this is a, a show where we just talk about uh, different things that we've learned through trial and error and what has helped us and what um, just any of our experiences that can help serve someone else to make a better decision for themselves or just uh, inspire someone to do more research on something. So. Yeah, exactly. Like we, we were looking for videos like this when we were... Um, yeah. And then in terms of like our birth stories, they're... Like, we have two daughters, um, so, like, one was was born in the hospital, one in, in a birthing center. So it all starts because we went through the whole system normally, the first one, because obviously you're, I was very, like, I was young against my peers. I didn't have any friends with babies yet, so I was kind of, uh, you know, breaking new ground, and I did not want to do anything out of the ordinary. I was just like okay, I'm scared, I'm pregnant, like, I don't know anyone else who's had a baby, really, like, next to me, and I just want to do it the right way, so I just listened to the doctors, you know, I went to, I had this really fancy gynecologist who was so, like, oh, you have her, she's the best, it was a five-hour wait every time, and all this stuff, I just trusted everything she said. So, like, the first time going into it, like, it's our first time having a baby, so we don't really know what to expect, right, so, um... Maybe, like, how did it feel getting into the hospital the first time, you know? Well, we went in, yeah. right? It was, uh, we were too soon, so they sent us home. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was a bit of a they needed the crazy room. situation. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so in an hour, like, I come back, it was just so Because you weren't crazy. dilated enough. Right, but I was still having contractions. Yeah. I, they sent, you go all the way home. It's just like a, it's just kind of, I don't yeah. know. What sucked was, like, it's we like had. inhumane the, a little. Yeah, and we had this, like, great kind of room uh, at the hospital when we first got there it was like big yeah. bath and like you know oh, yeah, yeah. And then we lost it. yeah and then because we had to leave and come back 24 hours later not 24 hours but, it was like six hours later. yeah it wasn't even i mean even it was sleep. like we went home i, I had a bath you had or something. an eggplant parmesan i had an eggplant parmesan and then i <laughs> which triggers birth supposedly no it's the eggplant not the parmesan. oh the eggplant yeah, the, yeah exactly so then it proceeded where then I went into like active labor and I wanted to stay moving. I was like, remember, I was like on the ball. I was so happy. Yeah. Yeah. Bouncing around. Yeah. Because like, working with. I think it, we have a picture like, of that, right? I'm like yeah. happy before. I was, OK. And then and then as soon as um, they said I wasn't going fast enough, I wasn't dilating fast enough because I had been plateauing at six uh, centimeters. <clears throat> They had to induce me. Yeah. So and then, Pitocin. Yeah, Pitocin. And as soon as they induced me, they put the fear that you're going to want this epidural now because shit's going to get super painful. And I was riding with the pain. Like, I feel like I was prepared for it. But mm-hmm. when they instill, like, someone takes away that confidence in, in a very vulnerable time yeah you're you're so vulnerable you're just gonna listen and i'm sure they they probably get paid i guess like every time someone uses that yeah i think going in we were like are we gonna do the epidural aren't we like yeah i was open to not but but then once you're there and you're like starting to feel that pressure and you know they're on a schedule you know and it's also so glorified in our culture like all the cool girls are like just give me the epidural like you know that's like in our society that's like super cool to like be yeah. that person like give me all the drugs yeah right because it's I don't just know like why that's like considered I cool i guess it's just like you know you you don't want to worry edgy. about it yeah yeah i don't know, I, don't know. <laughs> I i really like i i i thought that was cool. cool yeah i mean i wasn't gonna do it but i was like but like, until I, you do it or know like close hand what what it entails the epidural then you 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 think it's just like oh a little shot and i'm frozen i don't feel anything but well, I knew because we saw those thing. videos, like we saw the birthing stuff. Remember, like they showed the needle, like that. Class, free, that's yeah. when I decided I maybe didn't want to take like a spinal tap, like this super syringe that goes in, and it's like I'm like really, really. I couldn't even watch when they turned you on your side to do it, and they bring in the guy Thanks. with the <laughs> anesthesiologist, and you sign up a waiver, like you, you may could die. die. Yeah, it's I'm like like okay. not the kind of stuff you want to do. I guess I have no choice but to sign this waiver now. Like, yeah, yeah, and uh, it's it's all in the sake of uh, I think like taking your control away a little bit, giving it. They making, want you to have like full faith in like they just want you they don't they want you to give up up your yeah, yeah. they want you to give up your control. And it's they, easier for them then they right. can control like they can get you out faster. Sure. And, yeah, the pitocin it's like 
you know, we I don't know all the all the details, but I know it's it's meant to induce the birth. So that's like almost rushing things along when you know you sh- you if you needed to take two days uh, for delivery, that should be fine. But this pitocin, it's like a chemical that they're pu- pumping into. Well, I think there's a wait. Just to correct you there, I think yeah. that you should if you're in active labor, it should be uh, two days would be too long. You yeah, could, right. Yeah, like, exactly. Eat your Okay, so two days uh, is too long, but the thing is, is like when we did it naturally, it took longer, obviously. Yeah. Because it was. Yeah, you know, it, it, it could take way longer than what they give you time slot for, or like what they give you the pitocin for. So yeah, yeah so they gave they came around with basically like I mean they also put up that ultimatum that like hits his last hour on shift. Remember, it was like a yeah. whole thing. So I was like, oh, okay, doing it right now. So did the epidural, which was freaky as hell. Yeah. And then you're you have... suddenly you have no power because you're completely paralyzed. And then you've got to have your catheter stuck in. You've got to have your IV for the, like, I guess the Pitocin on one hand. And it was yeah. like, how are you supposed to be? It's in like a... you're Neo in the Matrix. Like when you're in like wires. I had like an yeah. oxygen mask. I had, yeah. A, yeah. I was, it was like such a mess. And you were, in, and you were perfectly healthy. I know. Yeah. I'm someone who was 28 years old. Um, like peak health. Yeah, no, like, complications. no complications. Yeah, that's like. Oh, and then so what I hear while I'm like half conscious because I I didn't sleep. I mean, it was just this like crazy state I was in for like hours, just being like hooked up, and every half an hour turned because they have to like yeah, make sure you don't like aren't sedentary. Sure aren't sedentary. Yeah. So it was just like this crazy few hours, and then I hear them say we have to. We have to put her in... She has to have a C-section. Section, yeah. It's taking too long. Yeah, it's taking too long. We have to have a C-section. Oh, my God. So I, like, luckily heard that. They didn't tell me that. They were talking amongst themselves. Yeah. Just loud enough for you to, like, hear it within earshot. Yeah. So just to, like, sort of disrespect me enough to yeah. feel like... Take away my self-worth. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Um, they're like, yeah, this patient needs a C-section. Um, and yeah. then I really, like, took... I mustered any... Like, I had no, like anything in me but i like mustered in i was like i'm getting this baby out like i am not having a c-section right and you can't feel like that whole like you had nine months of of physical connection to her and then all of a sudden it's it's ice it's cold and it's like you don't know if you're pushing or not well no and then even yeah when they tell you to push they have to tell you because you're so numb that you can't feel your own like reflexes or instincts like that's and you're lying on your back you're like and, and, you guys were pushing and, my legs. Yeah, like me and the nurse were like holding up her like dead legs and like trying to like push the baby <laughs> oh out. God. Like it was so bizarre. But you don't know. Like you think that's normal. Because, oh, what did like, I say? Like they're telling me when to push, right? Yeah. They're like one, two, three, push. But it was like it was not on my yeah right, right rhythm. Right. Like they thought. Like they assumed you didn't know how to push, and you're. <laughs> no, I was like, don't tell me how to fucking take a shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, yeah. You know, it's like, just like to your own body. Like, don't you know like, the fact that they have to do that because the women have no uh, like, imagine not yeah. having intuition at that time in your life when you need the most like yeah. connection and intuition. I mean, like the nurses, like yeah, were very nice and helpful. Yeah, luckily the nurse actually. Yeah. Was. Um, but that OBG that you spent all this time developing a relationship, she's not. She's not there. Isn't. Like generally, they're not there. Like the. I don't know how it is in other countries, yeah. but the guy knows that you've been working with. It's whoever's the, whoever shift is that. Yeah. yeah, and we were just like, where is she? Like, is she coming? Uh, maybe like, it's different in the states though. In yeah. Canada, you're just like really dependent on like the system. Yeah, and like they're so busy, like they're not gonna come to to the hospital at three in the morning. I think, yeah, to, like, in the states they do for sure. I think it's like the person you work with, but because of like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a private, lot more yeah. expensive. So yeah. like yeah, and I mean, and, luckily it's like really cheap to give birth here, but. Yeah, that's an advantage, yeah, free healthcare. All that to say is that, like, the, the an OBG is not going to feel pressure to come see their patient. Um, and that's, like, pretty scary because it's, like, someone that, like, you you, you entrusted for months and months and, and you're, like, you kind of want them there during the delivery. But, no, it's a bunch of strangers. It was actually you know. a whole <laughs> student. Um, <laughs> there was, like, a whole... All these interns. interns. Yeah, all watching you. It was like, really bizarre. Like... <laughs> All these like 
20 year old guys i mean they asked to make sure you're okay with it but you're oh yeah i'm like completely like like, unconscious they had me obviously like sign something that says it's okay that all these interns i don't remember doing that i have no recollection of actually signing that paper yeah i mean did you did you sign it did i sign it i know they just just do it yeah i think they just like right it's just like when you're at the mercy of the free healthcare, <laughs> these are the things that you just have to accept. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like so bizarre. They're all like, like just a crowd of these students like looking at my vagina, like yeah. super inappropriate. And there's like poo coming out and like, yeah. It's, yeah. It was like, I just had no dignity at that point. Right. Like but all kind of... dignity out the door and is not dignifying. And a woman in labor should be dignified. Yeah, like that right. woman needs to be glorified, dignified, like right. treated like a goddess in that time. And you are treated like Like cattle dirt. when you go yeah. to the hot. You're like, get you in, get exactly. you out. Like, like cattle. And that's what actually got me into actually the veganism with those after childbirth realizing. Anyway, but that's a whole other topic. Yeah. So maybe like how like that went okay. down and we had Rhea and, and it was like, it was fine, you know, like, um, well, there was a whole scary of the Marconian. She didn't pass yeah. it. We had to go back to the hospital. I mean, I feel like a midwife would have been more cause I think they're more, it's, it's more personal. So they're like, all, like they would, they shouldn't have sent us out without Rhea passing that Marconian. Yeah. But it was always different nurses on different shifts, and you don't get that sense of like someone's watching you to yeah. send you to. Yeah, like the same way if you had a doula or a midwife, they're there. They're for coming you. the next day to your yeah. house. They're yeah, like, yeah. we were very. It's like as soon as you're out of the hospital, you're on your own. Yeah, and it's already scary. And, and we're already coming off. I was coming off of it. First of all, a, an incision, like which another thing we didn't mention is oh, they had to cut, cut me. Yeah. Okay. Coming yeah. out of, like, I had stitches. Jeez. I was recovering from, like, the after, you know, the come down of all the drugs. Mm-hmm. I was super zombie-ish. Yeah. I was on, I think they even gave me more painkillers. So, like. Um, so then, maybe let's talk. So, you got so pregnant. Then, yeah. No, okay. So then, yeah, the next time, well, we I think in the meantime. Because we, we went to the OBG for Junie, too, right? We, were, we I started, started that way. You're right. So we only started watching. It was when we watched the movie, The Business of Being Born, which actually we watched that movie before I got pregnant with Junie. It was like, just like after giving oh, birth okay. to Raya. Right, right. So that's what we watched. And that sort of sparked uh, some Luckily, intrigue. you were open-minded about it because I was very like in the mindset like, no, we do it at the hospital. It's a, it's a hospital thing, yeah. you know? Like, like my mother's going to think you're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like because the, the concept of a birthing center... You think of like hippies like sitting around on a on a mat like just like the baby like it's it was like too like kind of uh, sketchy in my in my mind at, to begin with you know like I you I just wasn't, didn't know yeah yeah I didn't know but when you see like that's people, why we're talking about it because a lot of people just yeah they don't exactly know. and that documentary is awesome because not only does it show like the human aspect of it but it, it kind of ex- exposes the industry of, of childbirth and like, yeah just how it's like a business like they right. they, they have to it wasn't really they want to get as many people in and out of the hospital right. as possible that's why you see like doctors rushing you like it's not like because they need to get to their golf game it's like yeah no they so that's need more the bed, american you know? yeah. yeah but also in in, in yeah, yeah no, in our system it, too sure. yeah yeah not so that anything. so that opened our mind to potentially searching for an alternative and then um then well we got I'm, I'm so grateful that i came across that orgasmic birth mm-hmm. that was another documentary i made jared watch and i was like obsessed with watching youtube home birthing stories i became like really <laughs> fixated when yeah. we got when we got pregnant with junie that's all i watched uh it's like, and you think it would be like like oh, like scary to watch those videos. Oh, I love so them. I yeah. love them. I love them so much. I could recommend a few that if uh, anyone wants to so follow. So maybe like talk ones. about what like an orgasmic birth is. Okay, like, well, it doesn't necessarily mean you're having an orgasm, but it is finding the joy in in the pain, in the pain and the birth, the whole process. And, and to actually uh, experience it, I guess. Is well, so actually, so it was also an article that really resonated. was called uh, The Birth Wave. It's like riding the birth wave. And how it just like explain like how we can embrace these things that are like considered like we want to like get rid of them. Like get rid of pain. Like cover up everything bad, you know. It's like how to embrace these things and yeah. actually like use them for our power and our sh- like strength and our growth and all these things. So... 
birth the, wave yeah. was an article and then the yeah the orgasmic birth talks about just how important it is to feel empowered during childbirth right right like, like you decide who you want in the room you decide like you have the control and that is what really resonated with me that yeah, was exactly. like a game changer because we had something to compare it to you know where we're like it that... made me feel empowered i said i can make these decisions right wow so then um we found our doula jenny gold yeah she was great jenny yeah. gold yeah i was just so nice to just go with it's so personal you know and you're just talking to someone who's there for you who's been through um, it before yeah it's not like going to your like when i was waiting for five hours for the gyno and she had like five minutes for me it's like this was like a really more organic relationship them. like anytime you're like yeah just different experience completely having a doula mm -hmm. and um and then we went to those like midwife uh well the uh birthing center meetings, meetings which were really comforting meeting other people who also, all different types of people do it in birthing centers. So it was really cool to see, like, it was just a yeah. spectrum of all these different people. And any questions that they had about, like, is this safe? Like, this is very, like, bizarre. But, like, the birthing center itself was very welcoming and warm. And, and oh, really, like, comfortable. Yeah, and you yeah. see these rooms, and it's, like, this cozy, like, perfect room. That it's so do. civilized. Like, we were, uh, that's what I, I find truly. Yeah. It's, like, it's just... Like, oh, imagine that, a beautiful bed for someone who's giving birth. Like, it all makes sense, you know, yeah, having like... nice big bath. Nice big bathtub and a beautiful decoration. Oh, thunder. Whoa. Oh, thunder. <laughs> um, and that was just like, you see that like uh, a few months before you, you actually go in. So in your mind, you're already getting yeah. psyched up. Like, okay, like it's, it's going to be cozy and comfortable. Whereas like hospitals, it's like like fluorescent lights and everything's cold and like beep beep. It's like yeah. it's scary. Yeah, you know? it's not inducive to comfort. No. no, and yeah, we we just really like that was night and day. See, like it's like giving birth at a B and B. And oh my god! And then they give you like a beautiful breakfast. And actually, right after I gave birth, what did they give me? Like cherries and like they mm. were like treating you like a queen. Yeah. I mean, they just give you fresh fruit. Like, of course you want fresh fruit right after you give birth. Like, what more would you want? Like, it was just like, they know, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's so civilized. And the women there um, were very in tune and very, like, course, comforting. Yeah. And, like, you know, it's enough for me to say, like, it was a nicer experience, but it, it's and all And for you as the here. man, right? Yeah. Because you were sitting on that hospital chair. Like, you and my mother were taking turns. Yeah, sharing this, like, uncomfortable... You could talk we about had that a, we experience. We had a room, as... but, like... Yeah, like you're up all night, like trying to stay comfortable on like a chair and, you know, there's nowhere to sit. And even when we had to go back to the hospital, that was really bad. They didn't have any, like for, for Rhea to pass from meconium, which takes like hours and hours, like we <laughs> were sitting in a, in in a the... waiting room yeah. with like hard chairs and like people coming in and microwaving their gross food oh like the, all night. And we're just like, so crazy. like, could please someone come help us? And like, it was a fucking nightmare. And uh, then you go to the birthing center and it's like, stay as never long happen. as you want. Like, you know, like we'll help you with these forms. And you know, like it was just so much more natural. And there, there's no reason why anyone wouldn't want that. No, you know? even like, people who think that they're, I think we have um, people, they're, people are diagnosed as high risk like, just if you're over 35, you're automatically considered high risk, you know? You're not. Like, trust in the birthing centers. They yeah. know what they're doing. Right. I trust, like, I saw people who were told by everyone, no, they can never do it in a birthing center. And they had the best experiences just because they listened to their intuition. Like, yeah. your instincts know. Like, when you were actually giving birth, like, it, there was, like, it was, like, a longer process, but, like... The, the waves of it, you know, like where you go on the ball and then you bounce and then you go in the bath and then you go on the bed and like just being able to move around. And listen and to like, your, like you're you know, listening to We're, we're all to rubbing your back and like just like. It was so beautiful. Being part of it, you know, whereas like you're just this frozen cadaver before just like, am I pushing it My like yet? Bane like, mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was then the actual like birth when it happened, the delivery, like you're, you're like laughing and like I couldn't believe it. Like. <laughs> like you're like experiencing this joy at like the peak like pain moment but it was it, it was, it was real. amazing <laughs> yeah it was like it was like euphoria i can't even explain it but i couldn't stop laughing and smiling it was like it wasn't an orgasm for sure but it was orgasmic in the climactic sense like this i'd been working for 12 hours in this 
like just, just feeling my body and, and, pain and, pain and going through it and dancing through it <laughs> and bouncing through it and like moving through yeah, it sometimes yeah. i needed everyone out of the room it was like this whole like wave right like yeah. why it's a wild roller coaster but then like the peak of like when the baby's coming i was just hysterically laughing yeah yeah <laughs> i was just and like you were on oh, anything <laughs> no i know it's pure adrenaline like that's yeah. just pure you're the drugs that your brain creates naturally so that's like nothing oh. you wouldn't have never experienced that you know I'm so like, grateful for that I'm yeah. so grateful. So if anyone is pregnant now or is thinking of getting pregnant. Um, oh, and by the way, please, no one think that this is a criticism to anyone who doesn't want to do it this way or yeah, who sure. wants all the drugs. I, I didn't mean to sort of and some people have insult no choice, anyone. Yeah. And, and also, yes, of course, there's a definite uh, need for doctors in uh, delivery. Um I just think we need we don't need to depend on that. That shouldn't be the norm. That should be more extreme. So yeah, exactly. like yeah. having the birthing center near like you said, like near a hospital is important, but we shouldn't the default shouldn't be going to the hospital. Yeah. In my opinion. Right. If you're um, if you're like capable enough that you could do it at a birthing center, definitely do you it. You want to there. empower everyone that they're able to do that because the 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 one thing that limits you is not feeling like you're able to like that you like you have to feel there needs to be sometimes you need a, a cheerleader on your side you need someone to tell you like i'm here to tell you that but i know you need people in your life to tell you you can do this and hopefully if you don't have that in your life you can find that in yourself like you have the power you have all the tools you have all the intuition to know what to do yeah yeah for sure because like we were scared and apprehensive and you know, had all these questions and then you do it and you're just like, it's a no brainer. Like, obviously this is the way to go. It's nature. Yeah. And this is like doing it at a birthing center with midwives. Like you, it's a return to the primal way of doing things. And like, and even progressive way because it's so comfortable. It's like, Oh, it doesn't have to be archaic and like these middle ages, like yeah. stirrups and all this shit. Like this is like <laughs> progress. I see it as it, yeah. be, it's like how we rewild, right. how it's like progress to rewild, to same way that it's back. kind of yeah. progress to go. Like for you, like, cause the progress was always like, okay, like you don't need to feel the pain. You can have an epidural now. That was like and a false sense of progress. Yeah. Like and, that wasn't like moving. Through. That was like an adolescence stage of like progress on the grand scheme. Yeah. Like it just needs to be like rethought about because like, everyone's different and you know you need these medical interventions in in very minimal cases yeah. i'd imagine so don't like go into it thinking like i'm gonna get the epidural i'm gonna do it at a hospital just be open-minded about other options because um we've done it and like everyone else who we talked to have done it even a home birth which it is changes like, you so yeah. yeah just i hope that everyone who is watching who will be getting pregnant in the near future or is pregnant um experiences that empowerment in in whatever way they can while they're even if they're in a hospital just feel empowered that is the one thing i can tell you is you have the power and uh do listen to your body and make watch these things so you have an informed decision and um you write you the way that you ideally want to do this like write it out um, it's important that it's in paper. Yeah. So in case anything happens to, there's like a re record of it. How you envision the, the delivery. And yeah. The like I said, I want like, like women around me, like rubbing my back. Like, I don't know what this is, but mm -hmm. I just wanted like, like womanly comfort, but right. you were amazing in it. So yeah. I mean, I think you were I... my rock in it. At one point I did kick you out because yeah. I just needed women in the room. Yeah, for sure. But you were... She, I like... think I was eating chips or something. I was annoying you. Were you crunchy? Yeah, I was like... How are you doing there? Is this your husband Baby moving? come yet? No? Okay. But guys, take note for someone to be... Like, for your partner, like... Make sure your partner is totally just giving you the power and like yeah. listening to you even if you scream and, and shout out crazy insults like just take it all <laughs> yeah don't don't take it personally we have it easy like so yeah i'm sure most men know that can. that's probably pretty like yeah for sure men are pretty good about these things these but days the not in the olden days but nowadays yeah and yeah. you're leading the way for that too i hope that you inspire men to be like you were like in the hot tub, in the mm. in the bath with me the whole time. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, only when I kicked you out, you weren't like on my side, like massaging me, which was. But I think like every every birth, like 
like a woman would like you really liked when I was putting Push pressure hard. on your back. <laughs> it was never it, hard enough. Yeah, like it was like a workout. <laughs> you were sweating. Like, sweating just thinking about it. But it was like that's what you needed and you wanted. Yeah. And, and every woman's different, you know. Someone might want like pressure on their temples, let's say, or something yeah. weird. Like you have to listen to what the woman wants. Yeah, and you're just there to facilitate it and, and the and the doula the, and everybody was just so like yeah. I think that amazing. Yeah, and this birth, one transformational experience like this changes your life so this empowered me like this set a whole domino effect of becoming who I am now who I'm becoming like really Mm -hmm. just it just changed my life like I never uh had something to change me that way so yeah this is an amazing opportunity to really step into your power thing but like by experiencing the pain the joy of that it was so rewarding for, for us, you know, for you. Cause, for uh, all of us. Yeah. And it was just like, get through it. And the girls it, benefit be brave, from it yeah. because, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a beautiful story. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you, questions, yeah, <laughs> if you have any questions. Yeah. If you have any questions about a home birth or mid, uh, birthing centers, you can ask me. And um, I hope this video helped you. I hope this video helped you in some way or pass it on to someone who could. Thanks. Thank you.